This is Value Investing. I'm your host, Jun Kim. In this podcast, you'll learn everything related to value investing. Hello, fellow investors. Welcome to another episode of Value Investing. On today's show, I'm going to talk about two stocks. The first stock that I'm going to talk about is Macy's and the second stock that I want to talk about is Kraft Heinz. So these are the two stocks that I think are undervalued as of this recording. So that's what I like to talk about and the rationale behind why I think that they are undervalued. In the previous episode, I talked about two companies, eBay and American Outdoor Brands. I I got good positive response and feedback from my listeners. That's why I want to make another episode as relates to individual companies. So since my initial posting related to eBay on my shareinvestmentideas.com website, eBay stock has gone up by 8% and American Outdoor Brands Corporation stock has gone down by 21%. So there's a lot of fluctuation in the market. So in some cases, I I have positive gain in the short term and other cases I have negative return. So you have to be very careful when it comes to your investments. So don't take what I said as advice because I don't exactly know what your financial needs are. And I'm a long-term investor, so I don't care about this short-term price fluctuation per se. So if you're really not a good fit for long-term investing, then your investment situation is going to be different. So just take that into account when you're listening to this podcast. And before I get started, I just want to give you a quick disclaimer as always. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only and it is your responsibility to consult with your investment professionals for any investment decisions. So without further ado, why don't we get started? The first company that I want to talk about is Macy's. And I posted my article as it relates to Macy's. And since my initial posting, the stock price has gone down by 4%. So it's right now $23.63 as of this recording on March 14. So I want to talk about why I think that Macy's is undervalued and we can talk about why the value is not fully recognized in the market. So let me just go over four reasons why I think that Macy's stock is undervalued. The first reason that I want to talk about is related to real estates. I think this is a very well-known fact that Macy's has a bunch of real estates, usually malls across the United States. And these malls and these real estates could be valued in aggregate more or less the same as the current enterprise value of Macy's. So if I go online today as of March 2014, let me just go there. And if I check the current market valuation, the current market cap is around $7 billion and enterprise value is about $11 billion. But if you just purely look at the entire value of real estates that Macy's has, it is probably more than the current enterprise value. The reason why I say this is that if you only take into account one real estate that is right in the middle of Manhattan, it is the crown jewel of the real estate assets that Macy's has. It is valued currently at around $3.3 billion alone. So that real estate right in the middle of Manhattan, I go there often because I live in New York. That value alone is approximately 44% of the current market cap of Macy's. And according to New York Times article, quote, what Macy's does have going for it is real estate, a vast network of more than 600 stores across the country. Macy's real estate with an estimated value of $16 billion is worth more than the company's market value, according to an analysis by Cohen, an investment management and banking firm. 
This means that if Macy's were to be forced to be liquidated today, the shareholders would get all of their investments back and a lot more from the real estates alone. So that's a huge plus. And as I mentioned, this is a very well-known fact and market is just not recognized this real estate value for a long time. The second reason why I think that Macy's is undervalued is obviously very low multiples. If I look at for looking PE ratio, price to earnings ratio, it's around 8. And if I perform a reverse discounted cash flow analysis, which I like to do all the time because I just want to know how much growth is baked into the price, the current valuation suggests no growth or even negative growth depending on the assumptions you put in. And another thing that I want to mention is that Macy's has very juicy four annual dividend yield, more than 6% at the current price. So given that the Macy's PR ratios are at around 35%, 69%, and 42% over the last three years, I think Macy's is relatively in a safe place uh, to keep and maintain the current dividend level. And from the cash flow perspective, Macy's also generates around $1 billion free cash flow every year and pays around $460 million for dividends annually. So dividends appear to be safe. The third reason why I think that Macy's is on the value is because Macy's has gone through a lot of restructurings by closing more than 100 underperformed stores and also plans to cut more costs by laying off high-paid management teams. So Macy's is just not sitting idle. It's trying to manage business costs by going through a lot of restructurings. And in the face of strong online competition, such aggressive restructuring strategy by the management would be beneficial for the shareholders. The fourth reason why I think Macy's is on the value is that Macy's could become an acquisition target by activist investors, given the fact that we have very high-valued real estate assets. And think about it. There's just a lot of companies that want to expand their physical presence around the United States. And Macy's has a lot of malls across the country. So I think Macy's could become a good acquisition target by those big companies. So now the question is, then why Macy's is on the value? And can Macy's sustain its business in the face of many online retailers in the future? This is the primary reason why there's so much fear in the market with respect to this company's chance to survive. A lot of investors have seen how JCPenney and Sears stocks have gone down dramatically over the past decades and they don't want to get nearby Macy's stocks because of that experience. However, I think that there's a big differences between Macy's and these two failed department stores. First, Macy's has aggressively reduced the amount of debt that they hold for the business by using the proceeds from SS sales and retained earning over the past few years. So Macy's was aggressive in terms of selling real estates and used the proceeds to pay down its debt. And second, Macy's is still very profitable with high rate of returns on its investment, so well of 15%. So it actually generates tons of cash, free cash flow, $1 billion, consistently in the past, and that's also the difference between Macy's and these two failed department stores. And third, unlike Sears, managed by a private equity manager who squeezed every penny from the business, Macy's has invested heavily in their operations, loyalty programs, and merchant assortments, and customer services to stay competitive in the industry. So with that said, I believe the probability of Macy's going bust is relatively small compared to JCPenney and Sears. But A lot of investors tend to group all these department stores together and their 
quite fearful against the rise of e-commerce players like Amazon, Walmart, and so on. The final thing that I want to actually mention here is that just to be on the safe side, I would like to categorize Macy's as a cigar butt stock instead of categorize this company as an excellent company. The real estate value is very high. And if, if you get into the Macy's at the current stock price, then I think you have relatively good margin of safety. However, at this point, I didn't really go all in on this investment opportunity for my portfolio and my strategy is to set an amount that I would like to invest in an individual security and only invest 50% of that amount when right now the stock is perceived on the value because what could happen in the near future is that Macy's stock uh, could go down by more than 30%, even more than 30%, and that actually could create more opportunities for me to buy Macy's stocks at a lower level because there's always momentum in the price of stocks. And even though I believe it is undervalued, it could go down further and further in the future. So that's why I don't really like to do all in on at one price. And that's just my investment strategy. And as I mentioned and I, I could be wrong about this stock. So don't take what I say as your investment advice. I don't know your investment situation and financial situation. So just take this one as, you know, a hint to do your own research to see if this stock fits well within your portfolio. Okay, so that's enough about Macy's. I want to just move and shift gears a little bit here and talk about the other company on this episode. The company's name is Kraft Heinz. I think a lot of you guys have already heard the news about Kraft Heinz and it has been all over the media in recent days. So let me just tell you why Kraft Heinz stock dropped 27% in a single day on February 22nd. So that's the time when I recommend this, um, this stock at $35. And since my Initial posting at $35 is it is now $31.89. So since my initial posting, the stock price has dropped by 9%. So let me just tell you some negative news related to this company and why the stock had experienced significant drop in price. There are five reasons that were mentioned on a quarterly call and surprise investors. Number one, missed earnings and revenue. So this is quite obvious. Whenever there's missed earnings and revenue, you see very negative stock movement. Along with missed earnings and revenue, they also wrote down goodwill from their craft acquisition. So this one was a big one. I don't have the number right in front of me, but they had to write down billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars of the acquisition price that they paid to acquire Kraft years ago. So this stock is quite famous because this is the stock Warren Buffett invested heavily. So Berkshire Hathaway owns approximately, I think, 27%, I think around that percentage. So Warren Buffett has invested significantly in this company along with another private equity company called 3G Capital. But obviously they pay too much for craft acquisition. So that's why they had to write down the premium they paid for to acquire this company. So it actually hit the balance sheet in a negative manner during this quarter period and they had to write down goodwill. The third negative news that they came out on a quarterly call is the fact that SEC is conducting probe on its accounting practice. So that's one of the big negative news. And fourth, they had lower than expected for guidance. And lastly, they made a decision to cut their dividend by 36%. So there were a host of negative news coming out on a quarterly call. And, you know, you don't usually see this kind of blue chip stock go down by 27% in a single day. But that's what happened. 
when they came out with all this negative news. So negative news confirm what many people have suspected all along over the past five years. That is, the changing consumer tastes rapidly moved consumers away from prepackaged goods to more organic and healthier food option. There's no doubt about this changing trend, and I completely agree with them. But let me just lay out the rationale on my buy decision on this stock. First reason why I became a contrarian on this case is that the sentiment became too negative as of this recording and single day drop 27% seemed just too much. So I thought that it created some buying opportunity for volume investors. So for example, I couldn't find any positive articles on the day of this single biggest drop and that actually indicated positively to me that this might be a good buy. So I had to do some more research related to this company. The second reason why I think this is on the value is because I believe that over the long term, the Kraft Heinz brands would lose market shares to a certain extent, but it will be still around 10 years from now. I don't think that Heinz ketchup is going to go away 10 years from now. It's going to stay there. Probably Kraft Heinz may not be able to grow its business to a level that a lot of investors like to see. However, given the current price level, it's already baked into the price. And if I ask myself whether or not Heinz ketchup is going to be around 10 years from now, the answer is yes. And there are a lot of other brands related to Kraft and they're probably in a you know worse position compared to Heinz Ketchup in terms of brands, in terms of product survivability in the future. However, I still believe that there's a good chance that these brands will survive in the supermarket. What I'm trying to say is that there's still mood around Kraft Heinz products that are expected to last long. The third reason why I think this is on the value is that the stock may become an attractive takeover target. Because if the stock price continues to drop in value, and someone like Warren Buffett or 3G Capital may try to take company to public. Warren Buffett publicly mentioned that he's not going to increase his share in this company, and he said that he's not going to sell his shares either. So he's not going to make any move in terms of buying more shares or selling the current shares that he has. However, I think 3G Capital may try to put more money in to take this one private and or, you know, other investors can come in and try to acquire the company. I I mean, there are a lot of positive scenarios that could play out in the future whenever you see a huge price drop and whenever you see very deep on the value opportunities. And the next one that I also want to mention is that the management is trying to lower the current level of debt it currently holds on its balance sheet. Kraft Heinz has a lot of good brands and if the management team is trying to sell some of these brands in order to lower the debt level, I think that's going to be perceived as a positive sign in the market and that's going to be a catalyst to bring up the stock price. The next one that I want to mention is that this is an obvious one. The multiples are low right now as of this recording. So if you look at 4P ratio and if you look at other ratios, they are quite low. Even after 36% dividend cut, the 4 dividend yield is around 4.5%. So it's quite good uh, relatively compared to other stocks in the market. In this case, again, I wouldn't really go all in on this single investment. So I consider a certain amount that I would like to invest in as individual securities and I just don't go all in, but I just wait until, you know, stock price goes down further. So I just go in 50% of this amount and if stock price goes down further, then I invest more. So my rule of thumb is like 35% more from my initial purchase. And if it doesn't go down by that much, then it's also fine because I invested enough money to this individual security. 
So the strategy is going to be same as Macy's, and I would uh, categorize this company as Sika Bud as well. And it could turn into excellent company in the future if the current management team uh, cope with the difficulties that it currently has in the business operation. Okay, so that's all I have today. Um, I wanted to talk about Capri Holdings as well on today's show, but I don't think I have time to go through this company. But I believe that Capri Holdings is also undervalued, and I wrote a small write-up on my website, shareinvestmentideas.com. So the companies that I mentioned are all written there. I wrote articles. So if you want to know the details, you can go there, shareinvestmentideas.com, and sign up for free, and you'll get 2,000 points when you sign up. And using those 2,000 points, you can read up to five articles for free. And if you want to earn more points, you may need to make contribution to the website by posting your write-ups there and share your investment ideas. That's kind of the idea around this website. I hope you enjoy this show. And I'm probably going to make this kind of episode every now and then and the time period that I'm considering for my investment is more than three years. So I'm not going to make any decisions as to whether I was right or wrong within any time period shorter than three years. So it's going to be the long-term bet. I'm going to be very patient in terms of these investments. And that's what I like to do. And I could be 100% wrong. So I think you should do your own homework and take what I said as a hint, not as an investment advice because I don't know your situation. And try to do your own homework and see if it makes sense to have these stocks in your portfolio. And in the future, I might actually do this kind of episode for Korean stocks because a lot of you guys probably don't know and not familiar with Korean stocks. And I believe Korean stocks are very undervalued in the market relative to U.S. stocks. And that's another episode that I have in my mind at this point. Okay, so that's all I have for this episode. I hope you guys learned something out of this episode. And as I mentioned, go to the website, shareinvestmentideas.com. And I, I hope you guys can sign up and make some contributions and you guys can earn points and read other people's articles. Thank you very much and see you next time.